गुड इवनिंग गाइस कैन ऑल ऑफ यू यूर मी लाइ लाउड एंड क्लियर गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन ओके वेलकम टू द फॉलो अप सेशन आई रिपीट वेलकम टू द फॉलो अप सेशन या गुड इवनिंग कन्वीन एंड अंजलि वेलकम टू द फॉलो अप सेशन ऑफ डिरेक्ट एक्सेस एज गाइज यू ऑल नो येस्टरडे ऑन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ मे वी टूक अ सेशन ऑफ इन डिरेक्ट एक्सेस टूडे वी विल कंप्लीट द डी टी पार्ट द फिफ्टी मार्क्स so yesterday we did the part b gst and customs which is available on the youtube as well yes good evening as the and today we are going to take up the direct access part guys as we all know thank you thank you shubham abhi aaj ki baat karenge aisa hoga ki you know we all know one thing that indirect taxes is always a scoring paper evening good evening aditi so uh, we all know that indirect tax is a very scoring paper apan ko chalta hai 50 marks to apne jeb mein hi hai the problem lies always in the direct taxes and into direct taxes also mostly in the heads of income and more particularly if i tell you then it is pg bp and capital gains because the subject is huge the subject is huge and even if you can finish five heads uske piche ke chapters kitne lambe hai and therefore students fraternity always feel ki nahi ye option dal ke jayenge and agar wo option dala to apna life option ho jata hai and every 6 6 months we are supposed to repeat our exams so if you don't want to go through that pain of repeating this paper you have to go through the part a dt properly even irrespective of how well you know the idt part so guys today our focus will be only and only on direct taxes yesterday also i guess uh, all of you know that maine one said bola tha aapko bolne ka mauka bhi nahi diya tha par maine jitna bhi bola hai i have always you, you know i have made sure i have always in such sessions i always make sure that whatever is the necessary thing i have always spoken so that even whenever you are sitting to revise वेन एवर यू आर सिटिंग टू रिवाइज यू विल नॉट आपको सिर्फ वो सेशन सुनना है बिकॉज वो थियोरी है तो वहां तो क्या आपने सेशन सुन लिया आई डी टी का बार बार कान में लगा के तो पूरे सब कुछ याद ही हो जाएगा क्योंकि मैंने सेक्शन नंबर भी बोल दिया सब कुछ बोल दिया है सो इट्स गोना बी रियली फंड फॉर यू नाउ बट कमिंग टू डी टी ये इट इज अ वेरी वास्ट वन and therefore it is very important how we cover it so coming to lesson number 1 direct taxes at a glance we all know tax is origin from the latin word called as st to estimate one word nothing to be done प्लीज रिमेंबर द फोर प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ टैक्सेशन इसके ऊपर बहुत बार एमसी क्यू आया है कैन ऑफ प्रिंसिपल कैन ऑफ सर्टर्निटी कैन ऑफ कन्वीनियंस एंड कैन ऑफ इकोनॉमी आई रिपीट प्लीज मैंने यहां पर लिखा भी था बाय हार्ट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कैन ऑफ इक्विटी कैन ऑफ सर्टर्निटी कैन ऑफ कन्वीनियंस एंड कैन ऑफ इकोनॉमी this four are to be remembered always 
never go in the detail so remember the word tax is derived from a latin word means to estimate remember the four canons dt versus idt we have done yesterday only so i am not repeating it again remember income tax act is made in the year 1961 don't go to the history don't go to the event flow absolutely no need and come to constitution tax structure so now when you come to constitution tax structure understand the uh, understand the sections article 265 says that if you want to levy any tax in india you can only do that only if you have the authority of the law article 246 talks about the uh, you know the division of powers between the union and the state by the way as we all know schedule 7 has three list union list state list and concurrent list need not say we know indirect taxes is administered by cbic direct taxes is administered by cbdt that is central board of direct taxes both come under the concept of central board of revenue act 1924 and now it is central board of revenue act 1963 cbdt comprises of chairman and six members remember that chairman plus six members and please cancel everything and isme se you know do mcq aata hi aata hai ye chapter mein se kya aata hai cbdt ka full form aata hai aaya hua hai question cbdt mein kitne members hote hai 6 central board authority kaun se act mein bana tha to central board of revenue act 63 income tax india mein kaun se year mein pehle levy hua tha to 1860 aapko do yaad rakhna starting or end 1860 is the start and 1961 is your act that is what you will remember in chapter number 1 that's all guys so whatever was to be done in chapter number 1 i already have said it i hope everyone is very clear with chapter 1 everyone very clear with chapter 1 warm up ho gaya chapter 1 was warm up okay warm up ho gaya sabka एवरीवन इज द वार्म अप चलो जोश में आ गए ओके आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू रिमेंबर दैट द होल होल ऑफ दिस स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम लेसन नंबर टू है ना हाय रिंकू हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड बेटा आई एम गुड क्या बात है सीए बनने के बाद भी इतना जोश ओके ओके लेसन नंबर टू बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इनकम टैक्स गाइस Let's begin. Okay, let's come to the definitions. Let's come to the definitions. Person, the definition section two, subsection thirty one. Remember the section, and the definition of the person is the inclusive definition. It includes an individual, an HUF. a company a form and llp aop boi or a artificial local authority an artificial juridical person if not covered in any of the above category we all know huf ke related kya padhna hai guys huf is governed by two schools either mitakshara or daya bhaga i hope all of you remember daya bhaga daya bhaga applies only and only to the state of assam and west bengal एंड पूरे देश में बाकी जो एप्लीकेबल है दैट इज मृतक शारा सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट कमिंग टू फॉर्म यू नो कंपनी वी हैव इंडियन कंपनी एज वेल एज फॉरेन कंपनी फॉर्म एओपी बीओआई 
इतना अंदर जाना नहीं है कम टू द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एस एस सी सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट डेफिनेशन टू बी लर्न एस एस सी सेक्शन टू सब सेक्शन सेवन इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शन टू बी रिमेंबर एस एस सी इज अ पर्सन बाई हूम एनी टैक्स और एनी अदर सम ऑफ मनी इज पेबल और रिकवरेबल अंडर द एक्ट दैट इज द डेफिनेशन गाइज नेक्स्ट इज असेसमेंट योर असेसमेंट योर इज सेक्शन टू सब सेक्शन नाइन Assessment year is always a period of twelve months. Always a period of twelve months. Assessment year can never be less than twelve months. Commencing from first April every year and ends on thirty first March. Assessment year is the year in which you are assessed for tax. The general rule of income tax says the income of the previous year is taxed in the next following assessment year. I repeat, the general rule of income tax says income of the previous year is taxed. in the next following assessment year however there are few exceptions in which income of the previous year is taxed in the same previous year examples we remember 172 to 176 income of non resident from shipping business 172 and it is computed at the rate of 7 and a half percent of the amount of the fare of the freight what he has charged from that ship from the indian port income of people living in india either permanently or for long duration 174 income of bodies formed for short duration 174 a income of people who are trying to shift their assets to somebody to avoid tax 175 and income of discontinued business 176 so 172 to 176 you have to remember the section numbers and all the five exceptions Previous year need not be of twelve months. I already repeated. Previous year may or may not be exactly twelve months. It can be lesser than twelve months. Even it can be as less as one day. I may start the business on the last day of the previous year. Presently, हम जो पढ़ाई कर रहे हैं वो है previous year का section by the way section three and हमारा जो exam का paper आने वाला है that is previous year twenty one twenty two with the assessment year twenty two twenty three. that is applicable for the june exams as well as the december exams so guys everyone along with me yahan tak acha lag raha hai guys everyone along with me aapko sunna hai and i said you have to listen to this abhi and you have to listen this one more and then one more if you listen to this thrice balle balle exam ke din aapko maza aa jayega aapko padhne se zyada read karna hai और रीड करने से भी बेटर आपको ऑप्शन दिया है मैंने कि ये लेक्चर सुनना है एवरीवन क्लियर टू लियो Okay, let's begin the definition of India. India definition is given by section two, subsection twenty five a. Don't forget, India, Bharat, Bharat is given as the article one of the Indian Constitution. Its its waters, its sea bed, its subsoil, continental shelf. I'm sorry, exclusive economic zone. And I told you, ex exclusive economic zone is up to two hundred nautical miles. I have told you this. Exclusive economic zone is up to 200 nautical miles, and any other specified maritime zone, airspace above the territory and territorial waters is India. Uh, guys, this is very very important. Maximum marginal uh, rate and average rate of tax, as per section two, subsection ten, subsection ten. If you want to find average rate of tax, so what is the final tax amount upon the income into hundred? If you want to find the maximum marginal rate, that's the highest tax slab in which the individual is taxed. That is defined by Section Two, Subsection Twenty Nine C. The most important definition of all is the definition of the word income. Section Two, Subsection Twenty Four, Golden Words. It is an inclusive definition. Income includes income under all the five heads of income, like income from salary, income from house property. Income under the PGBP, income under the capital gains, and other sources, including all allowances like 
city compensatory allowance, DNS allowance, perquisites, everything comes under this, including winning from lotteries, crossword puzzles, scheme and insurance policy, you know, all gifts which are more than 50,000. But there are few, including dividends, is some inclusive definition. Now, what is important is what is capital, what is revenue? Please try to understand. Uski upar ek ek question aata hai. What is capital and what is revenue? We have 101 percent question on this. Uske question solve kar lete guys. You have to tell me A, B, C and company received 5 lakh as compensation for premature termination of contract of agency. Kya hoga? Capital C revenue. 5 lakh lump sum mila hai for premature breaking of contract of agency. So, is it capital receipt or revenue receipt? Is it capital receipt or revenue receipt? First, one like answer about capital receipt ki revenue receipt. Okay, we have one answer. I think so. Shubham, Anjali, SK, Snail, More, Aishwarya, Aster, everyone is taking it. The same answer capital receipt. Uh, the, the second one sales tax collected from the buyer of the goods. Sales tax collected from the buyer of the goods. Sure. Absolutely, Shubham, Snail, Mansi, everyone is correct. Anjali Aditi, it is a revenue receipt. I want you to do the fifth one. Or third, say fourth one, fourth one, fourth one. An amount of 1,50,000 was spent by a company for sending its production manager abroad to study new method of production. Training, somewhat like training. Is it revenue and by the way, it is an expenditure. By the way, it is not a receipt. Guys, it is not a receipt, the amount is spent. Is it revenue or capital? No, the answer is revenue, guys. The answer is revenue. Because SE trainings hoti rati hai, it is revenue. One more is the same payment of 50,000 as compensation for cancellation of a contract to avoid unnecessary expenditure. The fifth one, it by the way, it is an expenditure. It is a capital expenditure and very important which has come lot of times in the exam. Director got, of, got a lump sum money for not resigning from directorship.
director got lump sum money for not resigning from directorship. It is a expenditure snail, Aishwarya, it is by the way not a receipt. It is a expenditure, that is revenue expense written. You will mark the receipt, then you will get wrong. It is a expenditure, it is a receipt. Is it a receipt or expenditure? Chubham says it is a expenditure. Chubham says it is a expenditure. Is it, is it an expenditure or receipt? Okay, expenditure or receipt? Hai. By the way, guys, it is an receipt only. It is not expenditure. The amount is received. Hai na? So, received. Hai wo. Answer, no, it is not an expenditure. It is a receipt. So, it is very very important that you read the question, the important type is MCQ aata hi aata hai. I repeat, we have one MCQ always from this and therefore, I repeat, therefore, this is very very important. Please do this really well. Okay, then we have section 4. Bhat bhat pada hai. Ye amara pura income tax ka charging section hai. It is the most effective section. It is the backbone of the law. What is taxable, what is not taxable, at what rate it is taxable, at what rate it is not taxable, in whose hands it is taxable, in whose hands it is not taxable. Everything is done by section 4, the charging section. And then we come to residential status. So, guys, till here everyone is very clear. So, can we proceed with the, can we proceed, can we proceed with uh, the section 6, residential status, which is very, very important. Must the uh, residential status the court gay guys? Come on guys, be responsive, everyone ready for residential status, mare hoge ke jase mat reply karo.
ओके okay, तो अभी मुझे लगता है कि आप लोग को बोलना पड़ेगा रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस क्या है हुज गोना टेल मी द बेसिक कंडीशन वन मालूम है ना ये शॉर्ट शॉर्ट एमसीक्यू है गाइस और मैंने ये भी लिखा था व्हिच इज नॉट टू बी डन फ्रॉम मॉड्यूल सो आई रिपीट बेसिक कंडीशन नंबर 1 हुज गोना टेल मी He has to be in India for a period of one eighty days or more in the previous year, or B one or B two, am I right? What is the B two? B two is main. I mean, I mean, basic condition number two is main. He should be in a period. He should be in India for a period of sixty days in the previous year in all other cases. 120 days only and only for those people who are coming to India for the first time. They are from Indian origin, and their income, other than foreign income, is not exceeding 10 lakhs. And third, 180 days for people who are leaving India permanently for a uh, you know either for employment or for long duration. उनके लिए 182 एटी टू डेज का स्टे लेना है सो वी वन ट्वेंटी वन एटी टू एंड सिक्सटी बट उसके साथ एंड लगा हुआ है एंड ही शुड बी इन इंडिया फॉर पीरियड ऑफ थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज इन द लास्ट फोर इयर्स इमीजिएटली प्रीसीडिंग द प्रीवियस ईयर तो ये बी वन और बी टू है एडिशनल कंडीशन नंबर वन ही शुड बी रेसिडेंट इन इंडिया इन टू और ऑफ टेन ईयर्स इमीजिएटली प्रीसीडिंग द प्रीवियस ईयर एडिशनल कंडीशन नंबर टू ही शुड बी इन इंडिया फॉर पीरियड ऑफ सेवन थर्टी डेज और मोर During seven years, immediately preceding the previous year, if any individual is fulfilling either of the basic condition and both the additional conditions, status will be R O R. If you fulfill e any of the basic condition and either one or none of the additional conditions, status is R N O R. And if you don't fulfill any of the basic conditions, question of additional condition do not arise. The status is non-resident. Yes or no? यही पढ़ा है हमने उसके जो माइन्यूट डिटेल्स है वो आपको याद करने हैं जैसे डेट ऑफ रिटर्न एंड डेट ऑफ जर्नी इंडिया में काउंट करना है कि नहीं करना है यू नो ऑल दैट माइन्यूट डिटेल्स यू टू रिमेंबर बट लेट लेट एस टेक लेट एस टेक वन सम कि आपको देखो क्या रिकलेक्ट होता है वो देखते हैं टेक अप टेक अप दिस इलेस्ट्रेशन नंबर फाइव एंड टेलमी वॉट इज द वॉट इज द रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस फॉर द असेसमेंट ईयर ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री Mr. D was an Indian citizen. He was a professor of I M Lucknow. He left India on 15 September 2021 for USA to take up a job. He is a Indian citizen living in India permanently for taking a job. So, उसके लिए basic condition कौन सा applicable है? कितने दिन वाला applicable है? Who will tell me? Who will tell me? इसके लिए कितने दिन वाला condition applicable? बस कितने दिन वाला condition है? वो बता दो.
एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट वन एजू डेज वाला तो क्या उसका देखो वन एजू डेज होने वाला है क्या सो ऑफ फिफ्टीन सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च इज ही कम्प्लीटिंग वन एजू डेज एब्सोल्युटली नहीं हो रहा है सो ऑब्वियसली व्हाट विल बी द स्टेटस नॉन रेसिडेंट आई रिपीट व्हाट विल बी द स्टेटस नॉन रेसिडेंट सो रिमेंबर द कंडीशंस प्रॉपर्ली गाइस लेट्स कम टू एचयूएफ लेट्स कम टू एचयूएफ एचयूएफ में क्या लिखना है वेदर एचयूएफ इज रेसिडेंट और नॉन रेसिडेंट और आर आरओआर आरएनओआर आरएनआर एचयूएफ के भी तीनों रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस पॉसिबल है इफ एचयूएफ का कंट्रोल एंड मैनेजमेंट अगर इंडिया से होता है तो वो भी टेल मी कंट्रोल एंड मैनेजमेंट अगर होली और पार्टली इंडिया से होता है तो कौन सा एच हो जाएगा वो कंट्रोल एंड मैनेजमेंट होली और पार्टली फ्रॉम इंडिया एब्सोल्यूट ऐसी नहीं कंट्रोल मैनेजमेंट आउटसाइड इंडिया नॉन रेसिडेंट तो टेल मी वन थिंग अगर उसका ओ आर और एनओ आर चेक करना है वेदर एच इज ऑर्डिनरी रेसिडेंट और नॉट ऑर्डिनरी रेसिडेंट तो किसका स्टेटस चेक करना पड़ेगा किसका स्टेटस चेक करना पड़ेगा फॉर ऑर्डिनरी और नॉट ऑर्डिनरी एब्सोल्युटली राइट ऐश्वर्या हंसा अंजलि कर्ता का चेक करना पड़ेगा कंपनी के लिए वी ऑलवेज सी दीओ एम ओ एम याद है ना ओ एम इंटरनेशनल रिकॉग्नाइज टेस्ट है टू डिटरमाइन और ओ एम के ऊपर क्वेश्चन आते ही आता है अकमनी शाल भी ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पैराग्राफ है जो लर्न करना है अकमनी शाल भी एंगेज इन एक्टिव बिजनेस आउटसाइड इंडिया If the passive income is not more than fifty percent of its total income and less than fifty percent of its assets are in India, less than fifty percent of total number of employees are working in India, and the payroll expenses of Indian employees is less than fifty percent of total payroll expenditure. If all these three conditions are satisfied, I will say the company is actively engaged in business outside India. Very very important principles, guys. वो याद करना है उसके ऊपर शॉर्ट शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन आता है उसके बाद स्कोप ऑफ टोटल इनकम गाइस लवली यू नो स्कोप ऑफ टोटल इनकम एनीथिंग रिसीव्ड इन इंडिया इनकम रिसीव इन इंडिया इज टैक्सेबल फॉर ऑल है ना इनकम रिसीव इन इंडिया टैक्सेबल फॉर ऑल इनकम डीम टू बी रिसीव इन इंडिया टैक्सेबल फॉर ऑल इनकम अक्रूव और अराइज इन इंडिया टैक्सेबल फॉर ऑल इनकम डीम टू अक्रूव अराइज इन इंडिया टैक्सेबल फॉर ऑल यहां तक तो बहुत ईजी है अब बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इनकम रिसीव एंड अक्रूव आउटसाइड इंडिया From a business or profession, this setup and control in India. So yes, yes, no. Outside India, yes, no, no. Remittances are non-taxable. Past untaxed profits are non-taxable. LTCG on STT not taxable. Uh, Non-tax uh, uh, obviously will not form part of income. Long-term capital gain 1038. अभी exemption नहीं है, तो इसलिए सब में taxable. डिविडेंड फ्रॉम डोमेस्टिक कंपनी नॉट टैक्सेबल बिफोर फर्स्ट अप्रिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आफ्टर फर्स्ट अप्रिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी चेंज हो गया था तो इट इज टैक्सेबल गिफ्ट अप टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड नॉट टैक्सेबल गिफ्ट पोस्ट फिफ्टी थाउजेंड फ्रॉम अ नॉन रिलेटिव आर टैक्सेबल प्लीज गाइज दिस इज वॉट वी हैव डन एंड इसके ऊपर भी प्रैक्टिकल सब एग्जाम में आता है सो लेट्स टेकअप समथिंग योर एज वेल
आपको मुझे अमाउंट बताना है तीन टेबल आर ओ आर आर एन ओ आर एन आर डिविजन ऑन शेयर ऑफ इंडियन कंपनी डिविजन ऑन शेयर ऑफ इंडियन कंपनी रिसीव इन हॉलैंड टेन थाउजेंड डिविडेंड ऑन शेयर ऑफ इंडियन कंपनी रिसीव इन हॉलैंड टेन थाउजेंड बोलो कौन से कौन से कॉलम में फुल अमाउंट आएगा Dividend from shares of Indian company received in Holland ten thousand taxable to all Mansi. Mansi say taxable to all. Anjali taxable for all. Subham, Aishwari are taxable for all. Guys, all of you are correct. It is taxable for all. Past untaxed profits of five thousand brought into India. Past untaxed profits of five thousand brought into India. past untaxed profit no guys it is not taxable for anyone by the way guys it is not taxable for anyone उसके बाद इन दिस चैप्टर वी टू रिमेम्बर द टैक्स रेट्स फॉर इंडिविजुअल बिलो सिक्सटी इयर्स नॉर्मल स्कीम टोटल इनकम अप टू टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड नो टैक्स टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टू फाइव लैख टेन परसेंट सॉरी फाइव परसेंट फाइव अबाउट फाइव लैख अपू टेन लैख ट्वेंटी परसेंट एंड अबाउट टेन लैख थर्टी परसेंट सो दैट इज द टैक्स रेट एप्लीकेबल अबाउ सिक्सटी लेस देन एटी सब कुछ सेम है खाली टू लैख फिफ्टी विल चेंज टू थ्री लैख रेस्ट एवरी वुड रिमेन द सेम एंड अबाउ एटी सुपर सीनियर सिटीजन अप टू फाइव लैख नो टैक्स फाइव लैख टू टेन लैख ट्वेंटी परसेंट एंड अबाउ टेन लैख थर्टी परसेंट गाइज फॉर ऑल दिस वेदर यू आर सिक्सटी ईयर्स और एटी ईयर्स यू डू चेक योर बर्थडे ऑन फर्स्ट अप्रिल ट्वेंटी टू वॉट्स योर एज फर्स्ट अप्रिल ट्वेंटी टू For firms and LLPs, flat rate thirty percent. Local authorities, flat rate thirty percent. Unko AMT applicable or alternate minimum tax. Agar unka total income bees lakh se upar hai, so they can also pay AMT alternate minimum tax at the rate of eighteen and a half percent. For companies, guys, if you opted for one one five BA standard twenty five percent, one one five B double A twenty two percent. BAB 15%, total turnover net less than 400 crores 25%, any other domestic company 30%, foreign company 40%. Company को MAT applicable है minimum alternate tax 15%. Cooperative society very important exam में आता ही आता है below 10,000 10%, 10 to 
20 percent, above 20, 30 percent. Surcharge for individuals, if income exceeds 50 lakh to 1 crore, 10 percent of the tax, 1 crore to 2 crore, 15 percent of the tax, 2 crore to 5 crore, 25 percent of the tax, 5 crore se zada, 37 percent of the tax, highest you will have. Firms ke liye 1 crore ke upar 12 percent surcharge, domestic company 1 crore to 10 crore, 7 percent about 10 crore 12, so 7 and 12 is for domestic company, but foreign company ka alag hai, 2 and 5 hai, 1 to 10, 2 percent, about 10, 5 percent. Guys, we have done marginal relief, very important, agar aapki income 1 crore 1 hajar hoti hai, so 1 crore 1 hajar ho jayegi, to aap next, aapka surcharge bad jayega, to aap bahut zyada tax bannay mein aja hoge. तो एक करोड़ एक हजार मतलब हल्की सी एक करोड़ के ऊपर चली गई या दो करोड़ पांच हजार दो करोड़ दस हजार ऐसी फिगर आ रहे हैं तो आपको मार्जिनल रिलीफ मिलेगा प्लीज रिमेम्बर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ मार्जिनल रिलीफ इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अपने को सेस याद रखना है टोटल फोर परसेंट है उसमें एजुकेशन सेस टू है सीनियर हायर एजुकेशन सेस वन है हेल्थ सेस वन परसेंट है वन वन न्यू स्कीम लिया रहेगा टैक्स रेट याद रखना है अब तो टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड तो नील है अभी वहां पे टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड तो फाइव लैख स्टैंडर्ड पांच परसेंट सबको है अब यहां से चेंज होता है फाइव लैख टू सेवन लैख फिफ्टी टेन परसेंट पर डिडक्शन नहीं मिलेंगे सेवन लैख फिफ्टी टू टेन लैख फिफ्टीन परसेंट पांच पांच परसेंट बढ़ाना है ढाई लाख बढ़ाना है टेन लैख टू ट्वेल्व लैख फिफ्टी बीस परसेंट ट्वेल्व लैख फिफ्टी वन टू फिफ्टीन लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट एंड अबाउट फिफ्टीन लैख टू ट्वेंटी लैख और एनी अदर अमाउंट थर्टी परसेंट उसका सरचार्ज भी अलग है 10, 15, 25, 37, 37. Please remember this. And marginal relief to idhar bhi milega, udhar bhi milega. Matlab 115 BSE low ya matlo marginal relief pakka milega. Jaisa mene padaya nahi hai. Mene rebate padaya achche se. Mene rebate padaya tha. Agar aapki income 5 lakh se kam hai, tohi rebate milega. Maximum rebate aapko milega 12,500. Yeh mene aapko padaya hai. Maximum rebate. अब मैं आपको कुछ कैलकुलेशन के सम्स करते हैं गाइस, है ना थ्योरी तो हो गई यार कैलकुलेशन के कुछ सम्स करते हैं और कोई मतलब नहीं है इसमें कुछ करके है ना विल डू सम कैलकुलेटिव सम्स सो लेट लेट्स टेक अप दिस लेट्स टेक अप दिस सम कैलकुलेटिव सम्स फॉर यू आई वांट यू टू कैलकुलेट मार्जिनल रिलीफ If the income is one crore five thousand. और टू करोड़ एट थाउजेंड इन दोनों का मुझे मार्जिनल रिलीफ कैलकुलेट करके दो प्लीज कैलकुलेट मार्जिनल रिलीफ एंड गिव मी मुझे देखना है आपको कितना आता है प्लीज कैलकुलेट मार्जिनल रिलीफ अभी थ्योरी थ्योरी बहुत हो गया फ्यू सम्स नाउ फॉर द नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स ओनली सम इन दोनों का मार्जिन रिलीफ कैलकुलेट करके मुझे बताओ ऑन द चैट बॉक्स
मुझे लगता है मेरे को दोनों सॉल्व करना पड़ेगा सीधा भी आंसर नहीं आया शुभम तुझे सेकंड वाला पूछ रहा है मुझे तो लगता है दोनों सॉल्व करना पड़ेगा डू वांट टू सॉल्व बोथ देखो मार्जिनल रिलीज का प्रोविजन आपके सामने रख देता हूँ शायद शायद याद आ जाए क्योंकि प्रैक्टिस नहीं किया है योर इट इज मार्जिनल रिलीज What is the amount of marginal relief? No, this is not the right answer. Okay, चलो ठीक है। मुझे एक काम करो, one crore five thousand पे tax निकाल के दो। वो तो कर लोगे प्लीज कंप्यूट द टैक्स ऑन वन करोड़ फाइव था वन करोड़ फाइव थाउजेंड कंप्यूट द टैक्स ऑन वन करोड़ फाइव थाउजेंड Compute the tax No, yes, Anjali, it is absolutely correct. Twenty-eight lakh fourteen thousand tax will be twenty-eight lakh fourteen thousand. And how will you find twenty-eight lakh fourteen thousand? I'll show you. Chalo, one triple zero five thousand press karo calculation. One triple zero five thousand minus ten lakh kar do. इंटू थर्टी परसेंट उसको मेमोरी में डाल दो सो यू गेट ट्वेंटी सेवन लैख वन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड और अप टू टेन लैख तो आपका टैक्स का अमाउंट फिक्स है वन लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड उसको मेमोरी में डाल दो यू विल गेट ट्वेंटी एट लैख फोर्टीन थाउजेंड एब्सोलूटली राइट कैलकुलेशन अंजलि अभी उस पर सरचार्ज लगा दो इनकम अबाउ वन करोड़ है सरचार्ज विल बी फोर डबल टू वन हंड्रेड सो इट विल बी थर्टी टू लैख थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड Please everyone, thirty-two lakh thirty-six thousand one hundred. Please check your figures. Check, sir, thirty-two lakh thirty-six thousand one hundred. 
However, because income is above one crore and marginally above that, so max surcharge could not exceed that five thousand. So this surcharge is not effective. So five thousand is surcharge on a cheta. So now this tax plus this surcharge. Gives you twenty eight lakh nineteen thousand. This should be the tax payable. So, what is the marginal reach difference between thirty two lakh thirty six thousand one hundred minus twenty eight lakh nineteen thousand? The marginal relief is. Four lakh seventeen thousand one hundred. Marginal relief would be four lakh seventeen thousand one hundred. Everybody's got this. Everyone has got it. Final answer is four lakh seventeen one hundred. That's the maximum marginal relief available. Everyone has got it. Now, if you have got it, please do it for two crore eight thousand. Please do it for two crore eight thousand. What will be the tax? That's your income level. So, what will be the tax? What will be the tax on two crore eight thousand? चेक चेक आवाज बराबर है बेटा दिशिता दिशिता साउंड इज ऑल ओके
what will be the tax amount? The tax amount shall be fifty eight lakh fourteen thousand nine hundred. सरचार्ज कितना परसेंट लगेगा सरचार्ज इफ द इनकम एक्सीड टू करोड़ द सरचार्ज शैल बी ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट No, Anjali, your surcharge figure is wrong. No, Anjali, your surcharge figure is wrong. Hey, son, you have deleted the message. Your message is wrong. Your surcharge figure 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 is wrong. can only be that 8000 rupees rather than this so therefore the tax payable should be 58 lakh 22900 but hamara calculation aa raha tha 72 lakh 68625 so what is the marginal relief 14 lakh 45 725 would have been the answer is everybody now getting the marginal relief Everyone has understood the concept and calculations. Everyone has got the answers. If you have understood, guys, one last for you all. Income is five crore six thousand. I just want only one figure. What is the answer of marginal relief?
I want only one answer, amount of marginal relief. Okay, what is the amount of marginal relief? One second, Aditi, I'm just calculating. No, this is not the right answer. Yes, this is absolutely correct. No Esther, it is wrong. Aapka tax banta hai 1 crore 47 lakh 01800, yeh tax banta hai. Us pe surcharge kitna banta hai, woh dekho. Kyunki income 5 crore se upar hai, surcharge will be 37 percent. So, the surcharge is 54,39,666. But actually speaking, the surcharge is more than 6,000. So, this plus this would have been the tax. But this plus this would be what you pay. The difference is your marginal relief. Please everyone check your answers. The final answer should be 
फाइनल आंसर फिफ्टी फोर ट्रिपल थ्री डबल थ्री ट्रिपल सिक्स एक सेकंड है शुभम अभी जस्ट चेक सॉरी ये शुभम शुभम यू आर राइट So obviously, it will change the answer. So Aditi, yeah, I think so. Aditi, yeah, Aditi, you got the right answer, beta. Aditi, you got the right answer. It is fifty four seventy five two ninety one. I didn't add the one lakh twelve thousand five hundred last May. Please check your answers. Everyone has got the same answer now. Everyone has got the right answer. One lakh twelve thousand five hundred add कर लिया बेटा. उसके बाद ही one crore forty eight lakh fourteen thousand three hundred आ रहा है आंसर.
Okay. So everyone is now clear with the concept of margin relief. Everyone is clear with the concept of margin relief. Okay, let us take some numericals on rebate. Calculate rebate if the income is four lakh seventy thousand. Calculate rebate if the income is four lakh seventy thousand. Calculate rebate, guys. Absolutely correct answer, Esther. We made eleven thousand. Shubham, taxable amount आएगा ही नहीं बच्चा, वो tax free हो जाता है. Rebate का मतलब है tax free हो गया. Tanvin, the answer is correct. Please calculate one more. Calculate rebate if the income is five lakh ten thousand. Calculate rebate if the income is five lakh ten thousand. Yes, Tanvin, you are absolutely correct. The answer is zero. Tanvin, can you give me the reason why zero? Mm -hmm. 
yes shubham the reason is correct because the income is more than 5 lakh rebate is not available absolutely correct so here we did you know questions on rebate we have done question on relief we have done questions on residential status we have done question on scope of total income anything else you need guys in this chapter anything extra practice you need in this chapter any extra practice in that first two chapters now any extra practice in the first two chapters any extra practice in chapter 1 and chapter 2 okay this is an shubham Anyone else any questions? Any extra practice you want? Any extra practice you want? Okay, Aishwarya, no doubts. Nare, baad mein mat bolna, bhai, mein lesson three le lunga uske baad. One or two pe bata do. So, lesson 3 to theory hai, income exempt. Many important mark karke bhi diya hai. So, let's start the third chapter. Income exempt from tax. Uske baad break lenge. Matlab 1, 2, 3 ho jayega to break. So, before the heads of income, amara, ek ho na, do ganta kiya to heads of income ke pehle pehle tak pahunch gai. Hai na? So, let's, let's begin. We all know guys, there is a huge difference between exemptions, deductions and rebate. Exempt jo hota hai, wo total income mein aata hi nahi hai. Deduction jo hota hai, wo pehle aata hai, phil deduction milta hai. And rebate, tax ke amount mein se minus hota hai. First, we do not, we know that we are now doing chapter, ten, uh, chapter 3, which is income exempt from tax, that is section 10. Subse pehle, most common section 10, subsection 1, bohut common, bohut popular agricultural income. 
We all know in India, my agricultural income is exempt from tax. What is agriculture? What is not agriculture? We have studied this. And with that, the most important thing what you remember is Rule Seven A: Income from manufacture of rubber, you know, thirty-five percent taxable, sixty-five percent exempt. Thirty-five taxable, sixty-five exempt. Rubber Seven A rule. Coffee Seven B. If it is grown and cured, twenty-five percent taxable, seventy-five percent exempt. But if it is grown, cured, roasted, grounded, then forty percent taxable, sixty percent exempt. That is Rule Seven B. ये ना देखो guys. So rubber thirty-five percent taxable, sixty-five percent exempt. Coffee grown and cured twenty-five percent taxable, seventy-five exempt. Coffee grown, cured, roasted, grounded forty percent taxable, sixty percent exempt. Chai. Forty percent taxable, sixty percent exempt. Income of farm building. If the farm building is situated within two kilometers, if the population is about ten thousand and less than one lakh, then only it is taxable value. If it is within six kilometers, if the town population is between one lakh to ten lakh. And within eight kilometers, if it is about ten lakh, please remember this distance. Remember agricultural income. What do we say? Agricultural income or non-agricultural income. Both are added. When will we do it? When the agricultural income is more than five years old. And non-agricultural income, maximum, minimum threshold limit, which is two lakh fifty or three lakh, is more than five. तो so, अपने को यहां पे एग्रीकल्चर इनकम कैलकुलेट करना पड़ता है सो लेट्स डू दिस लेट्स डू दिस सम ऑन एग्री इनकम वी हैव डन वेरियस सम्स वाइल डूइंग द चैप्टर इन द क्लास से नॉन एग्री इनकम Is four lakh seventy five thousand, and agri income is one lakh. Compute tax liability. So, is the non-agri income above the? Is the non-agri income above the basic threshold limit? Non-agri income. And he is an individual below sixty years. By the way, he is an individual below sixty years. Okay. Hi, Shruti. क्या बात है टैक्स पढ़ने आ गए बेटा तू? So compute the tax liability. I repeat, we are doing for individual below sixty years. Doing it for individual below sixty years, non-agri income is above the basic threshold limit. Agri income is also above five thousand. So there will be a concept of aggregation of agricultural income. So, karo ke guys. Please compute the tax liability. What will be the first step? पहले दोनों को add on करने का है a plus b. उसपे tax निकालोगे. That comes to twenty seven thousand five hundred. Then you will find the tax on the basic threshold limit plus agri income. Uska tax then 
which is 5000 subtract करके जो tax आएगा that is 2500 plus surcharge sorry plus sales You will get the answer 23400. Check karo guys. Please check your answers. Please check your answers. Please check your answers. So, today we have done numericals on rebates, we have done marginal relief, we have done residential status, we have done scope of total income, now we are doing concept of agri income. Shubham, Nai Samja, Shabash, lovely guys. Anyone else? The suspense may jira hai. The Dishita ko clear hai. Anyone else? The suspense may jira hai. बेटा हमको ये स्टेप्स फॉलो करने हैं। Anyone else who didn't understood the logic of this? Anyone else who has not understood this? Guys, what is the status? Are they getting out there?
Guys, please reply. I will understand what is to be done. शुभम नॉन अंडरस्टूड दिशिता अंडरस्टूड ये तो दो जन का मालूम है बाकी क्या करना है क्या हो गया सब गायब हो गया लगता है Anjali and Aishwarya is understood. Hello guys, I let me discuss few more sums. Shubham Teliye, Mr. Amit, age is 61 years. His agri income is 4 lakh. But his non-agri income is 2 lakh 95,000. I think I have bold it. कि टोटल इनकम 695 है कंप्यूट डी टैक्स लायबिलिटी पर असेसमेंट या 2023 डी आंसर विल बी नील कैन एनीवन टेल मी व्हाई नील कैन एनीवन टेल मी व्हाई नील कैन एनीवन टेल मी व्हाई नील नील इज़ डी आंसर Can anyone tell me why nil? Jabki total income 695,000 hai. Why nil? Total income itna bada hai. 6 lakh 95. 695. Still the answer is nil. Tanmeen absolutely correct. Uska non-agri income is less than the basic threshold limit. Absolutely correct. Mene reason bhi dikha hai. Dekho utar bol mein. Non-agricultural income is less than the basic threshold limit. Next. Mr. Vaibhav, his age is 28 years, agri income is 4,000, non-agri is 4,90, total income is 4,94. Tell me one thing, what will be the tax liability for AY 22, 23? What will be the tax liability for AY 22, 23? Why this is a nil? Yeah, I saw here why nil? No, Tanvin, that's not the reason. Tanvin, that's not the reason. Agri income, if it is less than 5,000, then we will not add up. But, how did the tax liability come from? 
उसकी इनकम तो चार लाख नब्बे हजार है और अट्ठाईस साल का बंदा है एग्जाम नॉन इन गाइज नॉन एग्री इनकम इज फुल्ली एग्जाम क्योंकि उसको एटी सेवन ए का रिबेट मिलेगा अप टू ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड कम ऑन गाइज नाउ द थर्ड वन मिस कोमल Miss Komal, age thirty-five years, agri income two lakh forty, non-agri six lakh fifty, total income eight lakh ninety. Please answer this question, everyone. Please answer this question, everyone. Okay. Now see uh, how will you solve it? पहले आपको एग्री इनकम लिखना है फिर नॉन एग्री लिखना है दोनों को ऐड करना है और उसके ऊपर टैक्स निकालना है कम ऑन डू द स्टेप वन एग्री प्लस नॉन एग्री टोटल पे टैक्स Step one: Agree plus non-agree total pay tax. First step. Please, everyone, complete the step number one. Everyone is done. Step one. Then do step two. Take agri income and usme basic threshold limit add karo. Because banda 60 years old is less, so his basic threshold will be two lakh fifty or two lakh forty. Both will be added. Karke four lakh ninety pe tax nikalo. फोर लैख नाइन्टी पे टैक्स निकालो नाउ डू ए माइनस बी और उस पर फोर परसेंट सेस लगा दो दैट इज द फाइनल आंसर This is by using the concept of set off. Please do the final answer eight one six four zero. I guess all of you can see this on your screen. I give one more question. Please, I hope all of you can do this. One more question, dear. I have. One more question, for you, Mr. Viraj. विराज का समय है ना ये आपके लिए मिस्टर विराज 
aged 78 years agri income 360 non agri 710 total income 1070 chalo tax fine karke do one for you guys one for you i hope all of you will be able to get the right answer now all of you will be able to get the right answer come on do it fast
Okay, I think the Subham has got ninety to five sixty. Snail has got ninety to five sixty. Aishwarya has got ninety to five sixty. Dishita has got ninety to five sixty. I guess these many have already got the answers. One more for Shubham. For homework, guys, Shubham ke liye homework hai ye. Shubham, your age is eighty-two. Please copy the question, guys. One homework question, chalo. Please copy this. One homework question for all. One homework question for all. Please copy the question. Agree income four forty, non agree eight twenty. 440 एंड 820 टोटल इज 1260 एंड प्लीज आंसर भी लिख के रखो ताकि आपको पता हो आंसर क्या आएगा 93600 आंसर भी लिख के रखो 93600 प्लीज नोट डाउन द आंसर आल्सो 93600 गाइस ओके सो नाउ लेट्स फिनिश इट बाकी सब थ्योरी थ्योरी है प्रैक्टिकल हमने कर लिया एग्री इनकम का टेन वन का ना लेट्स फिनिश द रिविजन देन ओनली आई थिंक सो वी शुड बी स्टॉपिंग क्योंकि बैट बीच में चैप्टर छोड़ के मतलब नहीं है सो योर अमाउंट रिसीव बाय मेंबर ऑफ एच यू एफ एज हिज शेयर इज एक्सम फ्रॉम टैक्स टेन टू शेयर ऑफ प्रॉफिट रिसीव बाय अ पार्टनर From partnership form is exempt from tax 10 to A. Interest to non-residents 10-4 exemption. Leave travel concession 10-5 very important section. Remember travel only has to be in India. It is for himself and family members. अगर air से journey किया तो लोअर ऑफ इकोनॉमिक क्लास फेयर ऑफ द नेशनल कैरियर और द एक्चुअल अमाउंट स्पेंड विच एवर इज लेस रेल से गया तो फर्स्ट क्लास एसी और एक्चुअल अमाउंट विच एवर इज लेस अगर रेलवे से कनेक्टेड नहीं है तो रिकॉग्नाइज पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट है कि नहीं है अगर रिकॉग्नाइज पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट है तो फर्स्ट क्लास और डीलक्स फेयर और एक्चुअल अमाउंट स्पेंड विच एवर इज लेस नहीं है तो उसी डिस्टेंस का फर्स्ट क्लास एसी फेयर कितना होता और एक्चुअल अमाउंट विच एवर इज लेस दिस एग्जामेशन इज अवेलेबल ओनली ओनली इन ओनली इन टू आउट ऑफ फोर इयर्स व्हाट इज द करंट ब्लॉक द करंट ब्लॉक इज नाउ ट्वेंटी टू टू ट्वेंटी फाइव आई गिवन दैट टू जीरो टू 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 जीरो टू फाइव इज द करंट ब्लॉक कोई भी ब्लॉक में मिनिमम दो साल मिलेगा चार साल के ब्लॉक में कोई भी एक कैरी फॉरवर्ड कर सकते हो यू कैन कैरी फॉरवर्ड वन जर्नी 
to the next block. So if you carry forward the one journey to the next block, so आपको तीन बार leave travel concession मिलेगा उसके next block. Ten six important नहीं है. Ten ten B retrenchment compensation guys. Remember limit is five lakh rupees or actual amount to see whichever is less. Disaster ten ten B C. Any amount received from government is exempt. Voluntary retirement (VRS) ten ten C. Amount received or five lakh, whichever is less. Payment from provident fund ten eleven. Varying for amendment. I repeat, very important amendment. Section ten, subsection eleven. Agar employee ka contribution on first April twenty twenty one exceeds two and a half lakh, then interest over two and a half lakh would be taxable. So therefore, this new provision only takes the account of employee's contribution, not the total contribution. The above limit of time limit of deposit of two and a half lakh is increased to five lakh, for which interest would continue be tax exempt if there is no employer contribution. Please remember this absolutely important amendment. Ten twelve is same as ten eleven. उधर कुछ नहीं है. National pension scheme ten twelve a नहीं याद रखना है. NPS का withdrawal बढ़ा दिया है. But remember, withdrawal can be only 25% of total contribution made by the employee. Partial withdrawal is allowed. 10, 16 is educational scholarship exempt from tax. 10, 17 daily allowances to MP and MLAs are exempted. 10, 17 a any awards, Padma awards, gallantry awards, 10, 18 are exempted from tax. 1019 very important family pension to armed to the widows or legal heirs of armed forces is exempt from tax 1023 a very important income from professional association exempt from tax 1023 d mutual fund ka income exempt from tax 101024 income of a registered trade union is exempt from tax Ten thirty-two income of a minor child is exempt, up to fifteen hundred rupees per minor child per year. Then we are on section ten double A, S C Z. Very important. S C Z का reduction है hundred percent of the profits for the first five years. 50 percent for the further five years, and बचे हुए और पांच साल, maximum 50 percent. मतलब technically the reduction is available for 15 years, 10 double a reduction. उसका profit निकालने के लिए formula याद रखना है. Profits of units in S C Z into export turnover of S C Z upon total turnover of S C Z. We have done this sum. And that's all, guys. Here we finish the revision of chapter three. So apart from heads of income, guys, we have finished the first three chapters. Absolutely, I'm. Kab se continue kar rahe hain, guys. So I think so. That's the time for the la, you know, the, uh, ek break banta hai. Fir heads of income shuru karte hain. So maybe we can stop for 15 minutes here, and then we can start heads of income. So I guess next section we can next session we can begin at 7:30. I hope in first session all of you got a huge learning. आपको जो जो नहीं आता था या जो जो numericals भी आपने मुझे बोला मैंने वो भी cover कर दिया उसके practice questions भी करवा दिए. In the second session also we will be now on our heads of income. So our next session begins at 7:30.
I am writing that on the screen. So that everyone joins around that time. I hope the first session was wonderful. All of you have enjoyed this part. And let's meet again at 7.30 p.m. for the second part. And now it's important, heads of income. That's all for the first session, guys.
everyone is back. Is everyone back? Okay, ready everyone for the first head salary income? Ready for the first head? Okay guys, let us begin income from salary. We all know income under the head salaries. The basic important thing is employer-employee relationship. We know we are talking about your section 15 to section 17. Very important concept is there has to be an employer-employee relationship otherwise any income cannot be taxed as salary. We have two schemes right now, normal tax regime and the new scheme. The only difference is if you take the new scheme, LTC not allowed, helper allowance, research allowance, uniform allowance not allowed. I repeat, children education, hostel allowance, tribal area, transport not allowed, free food and beverage is not allowed. And Okay, coming to section 15 guys, basis of charge, we all know salary is taxed on due or receipt basis whichever is earlier. The word salary is a very wide term which we have, we will explain in detail in the chapter. Allowances are of three types, either they are fully taxable, partially taxable or fully exempt. Which are fully taxable allowances, guys? DNS allowance, fixed medical allowance, tiffin allowance, servant allowance, non practicing allowance, hilly area, warden allowance, proctor allowance, deputation, overtime, and other allowances. Coming to partially taxable allowances like HRA, very important, guys. HRA section 1013A provision, yaad karo. HRA is exempt to the list of the following actually received. Rent paid minus 10 percent of salary, metro city ke liye 50 percent of salary, non metro ke liye 40 percent of salary. Salary ka matlab hota hai basic plus DA plus commission. Aise yaad rakhna hai. Special allowances are given in the 1014, very important, also covered under chapter 3. Remember tribal area allowance, 200 per month is exempt. Children education allowance, 100 per month per child is exempt. Postal allowance 300 per month per child is exempt, maximum 2 children. Transport allowance only and only for handicapped 3200 per month is exempt. If you are in transport business, then exemption is lower of 70 percent of such allowances or 10,000 per month whichever is lower. There are certain allowances which are exempted only and only to the extent of incurred for official purposes like conveyance, traveling, daily allowance, helper allowance, research, uniform. We have special compensatory allowances, hilly area mein 300 to 7000 ka range hai. border area 200 to 1300 ka range hai. tribal up to 200 hai. field area 2600, modified area 1000, insurgency 3900, underground 800, high altitude. 9000 se lekar 15000 feet 1060 above 15600 per month. You have to remember these limits. Let us come to the next part retirement benefits and salary. 
we all know we are talking about your pension there are two types of pension commuted and commuted uncommuted means what you receive month on month basis uncommuted pension is taxable for all commuted pension ke liye niche sochenge kya karna hai commuted ke liye government employee rahega to fully exempt <laughs> non government employee hoga so to ask yourself whether gratuity is received whether gratuity is not received if gratuity is received one third of the full value is exempt one third of the full value and if gratuity is not received half of full value is exempt come to gratuity section 10 10 gratuity is only receivable provided your non your continuous service is 5 years or above gratuity ka provision is very very simple for government employees the whole gratuity is uh, exempt if you are in private sector you may be covered by poga you may not be covered by poga poga is the payment of gratuity act if you are covered by poga amount received 20 lakh or 15 days salary on the basis of the last drawn salary wherein the part in excess of 6 months is also considered your salary ka matlab hota hai basic plus da and number of days is 26 however if you are not covered by poga amount received 20 lakh same rahega udhar 15 by 26 ki jagah half month salary ho jayega वहां लास्ट ड्रॉन था यहाँ एवरेज सैलरी हो जाएगा यहाँ पे कंप्लीटेड ईयर ही लेना पड़ेगा फ्रैक्शन अलाउ नहीं होएगा और यहाँ पे बेसिक प्लस डीए प्लस कमीशन आएगा लीव एंकेजमेंट टेन टेन ए लीव एंकेजमेंट रिसीव बाय द गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय फुली एग्जेप्ट नॉन गवर्नमेंट के लिए तीन लाख एक्चुअली रिसीव टेन मंथ एवरेज सैलरी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द लास्ट टेन मंथ सैलरी एंड द फोर्थ पॉइंट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कैश इक्विवेलेंट टू द leave standing to the credit of the employee at the time of the retirement based on 10 months average salary drawn and every year ke liye maximum leave allowable is 30 salary ka matlab hoga basic plus da plus commission vrs humne last chapter mein kar liya tha 1010 c mein profits in lieu of salary fully taxable perquisites mein teen category hai taxable tax free We have taxable perquisites for all and tax-free perquisites one by one. पढ़ेंगे. Let's begin with taxable perquisites. Rent-free furnished accommodation. Government employee रहेगा तो license fee minus the rent recovered. Furnished रहेगा तो add ten percent of the original cost of the furniture. If the furniture is hired, add the higher charges. नॉन गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉई चेक करो पॉपुलेशन मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी बिलो ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स एंड अप टू टेन लैक्स फिफ्टीन टेन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी बिलो दैट सेवन एंड हाफ परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी लीज पे लिया रहेगा तो मैक्सिमम फिफ्टीन परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी अगर होटल में एकोमोडेशन दिया तो फ्री होगा अप टू फिफ्टीन डेज फिफ्टीन डेज के बाद ऐसा नहीं होगा और होटल के लिए परक्यूजिट क्या लेंगे 24 परसेंट ऑफ सैलरी होटल के लिए और एक्चुअल होटल चार्जेस विच एवर इज लेस इंटरेस्ट फ्री और कंसेशन लोन एसबीआई का जो रेट है वो रेट से हम टैक्स लगाएंगे बीस हजार रुपए तक की लोन माफ है बीस हजार के ऊपर की लोन पे वी विल चार्ज इंटरेस्ट एट द रेट ऑफ एस बी आई दैट इज सपोज सिक्स परसेंट मूवेबल एसेट्स Perquisite value is ten percent of the actual cost or higher charges, whatever is actual. Gas, electricity, actual amount, and if employer himself is manufacturing that cost per unit. Free or educational facility. Whatever amount you receive minus whatever is recovered becomes a perquisite. Credit card, whatever amount is received becomes a perquisite. Club, full perquisite. Health club. If it is offered in the office premises, common for all, not a perquisite. Sweat equity, I have shortcut the fair market value minus amount recovered from the employee becomes a perquisite. Motor car, I have remembered very well. Guys, remember motor car? How do you remember motor car? How do you remember? Where the expenses are paid by, uh, by the employer, and car is also owned by the employer, 
and if it is only used for official purpose, not a prosecution. If it is owned by the employer and used partially for personal as well as official purpose, then the taxable value of the perquisite has to be found out. And what is that? That is nothing but running charges. And if the car is owned by the employer and is completely used for personal purpose, check the cubic capacity of the car. If it is up to 1.6 liters, 1800 per month, more than 1.6 liter, 2400 per month. If driver is given, 900 per month is to be added. Now, let us see the second angle. Gadi, employee ki, kharcha employee ka, used for official purpose, not a purpose. Gadi employee ki, kharcha employee ka, only for personal purpose, not a purpose. Gadi employee ki, partly for official, partly for pers personal, not a perquisite. Third category, where the expenses are met by the employee. Car employer ki, and used by the employee wholly for official purpose, not a perquisite. Car employer ki expense employee ka partially for wear and tear charges. Car is employer expenses is by employee partly for official, partly personal. Cubic capacity up to 1.6 liter, uh, 600 per month, more than 1.6, 900, driver 900. So, guys, you have to remember the table. Kuch kuch perquisites, summation tax free, that is like medical facility provided by the office to all the employees. This is the medical facility in India. If you see taxable is only and only if they are not covered by a common health scheme. Outside India, if you see, it is obviously free but as permitted by the RBI because ab uh, facilities are abroad. Very important is PF, there are three types of PF, statutory provident fund, recognized provident fund, unrecognized provident fund. Tino ke beech ka difference here ha. Statutory provident fund mein employee ka contribution, employer ka contribution, maturity sub exempt. Recognized provident fund sub exempt. But uske under amendment hai, aaj kal interest only and only up to 9.5 percent per annum, contribution only 12 percent and total interest should not exceed 7 lakh 50 thousand, either uske upar ka interest will become income from salary. Unrecognized provident fund koi rakta hi nahi hai. Humne relief sikha tha, 18 and 1 ka relief of salary. जब जब पुराने सालों का सैलरी इस साल मिल जाता है सडनली तो इस साल की टैक्स लायबिलिटी बहुत बढ़ जाती है उसको कम करने के लिए रिलीफ होता है रिलीफ कैसे कैलकुलेट करते हैं देन द स्टेप्स हमें मैंने बोला था सिर्फ स्टेप्स याद करने हैं टोटल टैक्स निकालो फिर टैक्स एक्सक्लूडिंग अरियर निकालो दोनों के बीच का जो टैक्स है वो अरियर्स के रिलेटेड है उस अरियर्स को पुराने रेट से टैक्स करके देखो कितना होता सब्ट्रैक्ट द वैल्यू एंड फाइंड द रिलीफ फ्रॉम सैलरी देयर आर थ्री डिडक्शंस स्टैंडर्ड डिडक्शन कंपलसरी सबको मिलता है 16 1 का 50000 रुपीस मैक्स अब सैलरी कम होगी तो कम मिलेगा एंटरटेनमेंट अलाउंस गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉई को फुल्ली फुल्ली मिलता है प्राइवेट एम्प्लॉय को तो बिल्कुल नहीं मिलता है गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय को कितना मिलता है वन फिफ्थ ऑफ बेसिक सैलरी फाइव थाउजेंड और एक्चुअली रिसीव प्रोफेशन टैक्स इज ऑलवेज टू बी गिवन एस डिडक्शन फॉर ऑल द कैटेगरी ऑफ एम्प्लॉय बड़े सम सम करेंगे नहीं गाइस क्योंकि वैसे भी आपको पता है वो इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं होते बट येस वी आर गोना डू शॉर्ट सम्स टूडे एंड आई गिव यू द सम्स
प्लीज एवरी वन वी विल डू सम प्रॉब्लम नाउ okay please write down the question here it is kaha se shuru karenge pehle gratuity lete ya to pehle pension le lo chalo mr a Please compute the tax liability. Please compute the tax liability. Please compute the tax liability. Please compute the tax liability, guys. Please compute pension, guys. Here pension. पहले देखो uncommuted है कि commuted है. Please check whether it is commuted or uncommuted.
Is it commuted or uncommuted? Guys, is this commuted or uncommuted? Anyone getting the answer? <coughs> is it commuted or uncommuted? First of all, yes, I am. यह कम्यूटेड पेंशन है कि अनकम्यूटेड है नो वन और बस ये पर मंथ है ये अनकम्यूटेड पेंशन है तो अनकम्यूटेड पेंशन का टैक्सेबिलिटी क्या होता है What is the taxability of uncommuted pension? <coughs> He is retired from LIC, so he is a government employee. But what is the taxability of uncommuted pension for a government employee? What is the taxability of Uncommuted pension in the hands of a government employee. Is it fully exempt? Hansa says, Anjali says, fully taxable. The answer is uncommuted pension is fully taxable for all categories. Therefore, the tax liability will be how much? January se pension mila hai guys. Got pension from January. <coughs> So, what will the pension amount? How much pension has he received? भाई लगता है तुम लोग थक चुके हो आज के लिए कैपेसिटी ओवर हो गई लगता है टैक्स भेजे में घुस गया है 
दस हजार रुपए पर मंथ फॉर जनवरी तो व्हाट इज द टैक्सेबल अमाउंट टोटल इज टेन थाउजेंड पर मंथ इनटू थ्री मंथ्स दैट इज अप टू द एंड ऑफ द प्रीवियस ईयर दैट इज थर्टी थाउजेंड पर मंथ दैट इज थर्टी थाउजेंड पर मंथ रिविजन पेंडिंग हंसा वेरी गुड शाबाश मुझे लगता है वैसे भी इसके बाद एक सेशन लेना ही पड़ेगा आज अपना कुछ होने वाला है नहीं हम सैलरी के सम्स तक भी पहुंचे खाली है ना चार हेड बाकी है एक सेशन और लेना ही पड़ेगा प्रैक्टिकल्स के लिए उन्होंने रिवाइज नहीं किया हुआ है प्रैक्टिकल्स गाइज यू लाइव टू रिवाइज द प्रोविजन पहले प्रोविजन अगर होगा ना तो ही सम्स क्लिक होने वाला है अगर आप टैक्स के अंदर प्रोविजन लर्न नहीं करेंगे तो अपन कैसे उसको रिवाइज करेंगे टैक्स इज ऑल ऑन प्रोविजन गाइस टू फर्स्ट मेमोराइज द प्रोविजन पहले एक ही साथ बैठ के आपको सारे प्रोविजन लर्न करने पड़ेंगे ऑन वन सिटिंग और उसके बाद आप उसके प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम कर सकते हैं इफ यू आर फेसिंग प्रॉब्लम इन प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम it means we are we haven't revised the provisions well so i think so aaj ka aapka tiredness dikh raha hai aapke replies bhi mare hue thake hue aa rahe hain so i think so aaj ka session mere hisab se hum salary pe stop karte hain agle session mein main sirf numericals lunga main theory provisions touch hi nahi karunga kyunki mere ko nahi lagta aapko theory sunne mein koi interest hota hai so next session i plan on maybe monday 16th of May. I repeat, I will planning a session on Monday, 16th of May, and on that particular day, I think so. We should be doing only numericals. So, by the way, your numericals, sub tax, tax, ka revise ho jayega, to maza aega. Otherwise, aapke liye bouncer jayenge sums. So, please revise the numericals and keep so that we can continue because this way we can't because aap log mare hue 10,000 into 30,000 ke liye bhi dimag lagana pad raha hai tumhe. और वो सैलरी के सम शुरू होते ही समझ गया कि तुम्हारे रिप्लाईज की थकी थके पड़े हैं सो आई थिंक सो गाइस यू नीड टू बकअप इन टैक्स रिवाइज द प्रोविजन वेल देन ओनली यू विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व द न्यूमेरिकल्स सो मे बी वी मीट ईच अदर ऑन मंडे विल बी ऑफिशियली अपडेटिंग यू वंस मोर ऑन द सेम बट मोस्ट प्रोबेबली ऑन मंडे और मे बी अ ट्यूजडे इधर ऑफ द टू डेज एंड वी प्लान वन मोर सेशन ओनली एंड ओनली only on only tax numericals so aaj ke liye itna hi guys for this session i think so we are done i think so for this session we are done for the day here please revise and keep guys otherwise this sessions are not useful hai na aapke paas time de raha hu main aapko teen din ka please revise and keep so that you know you are able you, we all are at the same parity on the next class probably we'll be only taking the numericals on for that particular day so that's all from my side aaj ke liye see you all bye bye take care study hard guys exams are on the hey jab 17 din baki ho hai na to full full day full full night padhai karna chahiye make sure ki aapka pura revision ho ke ready ho so that that session is fruitful to you and me as well that's all from my side guys आज के लिए इतना ही सी यू ऑल वेरी सुन बाय गाइस टेक केयर एंड गॉड ब्लेस यू गुड नाइट